Okay, so what we are looking at today is uh, LAN switching technologies. Um, when we're talking about LAN switching technologies, um, it simply means that uh, someone as a network engineer knows what a switch is. Uh, the person knows what are the different types of switches we have out there in the market. And you also understand how to install, configure, and maintain some of the technologies that are already embedded in these switches. All right, so those are the things that are classified as LAN switching technologies. So you should be able to understand what a VLAN is and what are the use cases of a VLAN. When or when do we not use VTP, which is VLAN trunking protocol? Uh, what exactly is trun trunking, which is also referred to as port tagging? What is spanning tree protocol, which here is STP? What is a touch channel? And when do we need to set up inter VLAN? routing so all of these technologies are in a network switch and a network engineer or a network administrator need only not to know what these technologies are but also their use cases and when they need to be set up as well as how to set them up so to begin with what is a switch a switch typically is a network device that is used to interconnect two or more computing devices together um, a switch simply is a layer 2. So at the OSI model, switches operate at layer 2 of the OSI. Uh, so when we have a switch, uh, we will be able to connect multiple systems like printers, desktops, laptops to the switch and give these devices IP addresses. And with the help of switches, uh, these devices will be able to intercommunicate and share files as well as information. So that's what a switch is, is a network device that is used to interconnect two or more computing devices together. All right. So, so when we talk about these um, network devices called switches, there is actually a layer two and there is a layer three switch, right? So I did mention before that a switch is a layer two device. So the typical switch where we configure the switching technologies like VLAN, VTP, trunking, spanning tree, touch channel, etc. Uh, those are referred to as layer 2 switches because they perform layer 2 tasks, which is the switching technologies. But there are certain kind of switches that goes beyond what a switch can do. And those are called layer 3 switches. So in a layer 3 switch, it simply means that we have a switch here. Uh, this switch could be 24 port, it could be 48 port. It doesn't really matter um, the number of ports the switch has. But what matters is that a layer 3 switch will perform the whole of these technologies and still go ahead and do the work of a router. We know that routers are needed in a network when we need devices on different segments or on different network to communicate and share information with one another. We need to get a router. So talking to a device that is not in the same network as you um, requires router. So some switches can do both the work of a switch and the work of a router. And those switches are referred to as layer 3 switch. All right. So let's look at the different types of switches that we have. Um, just come over here and we have quite a couple of switch types. So here we we'll start with a Cisco small business. Uh, Cisco small business switches are entry level managed switches from Cisco. And um, these switches have the management capabilities that the enterprise level switch should have. Uh, these switches support VLAN, VTP, trunking, spanning tree, ETA channel, and inter VLAN routing. And these switches are managed primarily using a web browser. And some of the switches will come with a default IP address of 10.0.0.1. And uh, what these switches actually do is that they are affordable. 
10.0, as I mentioned earlier, dot zero dot one. Uh, some of them come with this IP address and um, username Cisco, password Cisco. Uh, so these switches are affordable, not as expensive as other versions of Cisco switches. And uh, so the small business line of switches from Cisco have two different flavors. We have the SF series and we have the SG series, right? So the S here meaning is, is, is for small business and the F here is the speed of the port. So the port supports 100 megabit per second speed, which is fast Ethernet. And so for the SF series, so we have several series here. So we have the SF100, we have the SF200, as well as the SF300. Now, same thing applies to the SG series of the small business switches. So the S stand for small business, while the G is the speed of the port is gigabit Ethernet, which is 1000 megabits per second. And still on the SG series, we have the SG100, just as we have in the SF series. We also go ahead and have SG200, SG300, as well as SG350 series switches. So all of these switches fall under Cisco small business line of switches and they are also managed switches. All right. So apart from the uh, small business switches, Cisco also produce other switches referred to as catalyst switches. And so for the catalyst switches, we have the 2000 series switches, which today are end of life. So we have the 2950 switch, we have the 2960 switch, and we have under the 3000 series switches, the 3550, the 3560, okay? So here we have 3560, that is under the 3000 series switches, we have 3750, there is also 3850, now especially 3750 and 3560, there is also 3550. Uh, all these switches are end of life, so which means that they have reached end of support. And Cisco no longer releases any firmware whatsoever in terms of patching the switch, upgrading the firmware, the operating system is in order to keep it secure. Uh, Cisco no longer offer those kind of services or support for these models of switches. So if you are looking at upgrading your switches in your enterprise, you need to change all of these switches, 2950, 2960, 3560, 3750, 3850 is still um, not end of life yet. But there are 9000 series switches that you can use to replace any of the switches mentioned above. And under the 9000 series, we have the 9200 series, we have the 9300 series, and in each of these series, there are different models, okay? So 9300 series switch, there is 9400 series, there is also 9500 series, as well as 9600 series. So the 9000 series switch has all the features all the next generation switching technologies that you can think of are all supported in this device okay so we could go ahead and purchase any of these newer switch models and use it to replace um, the older models that we may still have in our network that are already classified as end of life but this 2950 series 2960 series are still useful especially if you want to set it at home for practice. So you could go for 2960 switch. Uh, this switch will support all these technologies and you'll be able to sit at home and have your hands on physical equipment and then practice and experiment with all of these technologies, learning how to fine tune them, how to set them up, as well as how to troubleshoot and monitor them. All right. So I recommend 2960 switch. Uh, there are different varieties of 2960. There is 8 ports, there is 24 ports, 
there is um, 48 ports all right so eight ports should be good enough uh, for you to get started in terms of uh, laying your hands on real equipment all right so mention two switches or uh, two switch types the small business the catalyst switch series and we have the the one that they call the modular switch uh, the modular switches these are data center level of switches and uh, when we talk about modular switches we are looking at cisco 6500 series switch this is a service provider kind of switch and these 6500 series are modular switches in the sense that there are modules empty dummies on the device and if you want to add a new functionality to the switch we could get a card like imagine you have an ips card which is intrusion prevention system you can insert this card into one of the modules in the switch and you have given your switch a new capability which is being able to do intrusion detection intrusion prevention system okay so that's modular switches there are 6510 6515 6520 and all these fall under modular switches now these switches we have mentioned here are all under what is called managed switch so managed switch means that these switches support configuration they have some configuration or configurable features in them and then a network admin or a network engineer could actually log into them and then set up these features all right but then we have another type of switch which we are not going to mention here and that falls on the unmanaged switch okay so we have managed and unmanaged so for the unmanaged switch that's what we see in some business center in small offices where security is not really a priority so they just needed a device that could interconnect all the devices they have on their network together in order for this device to interact and share resources amongst each other so in that case you might go for a managed switch which is far more cheaper compared to managed but in a managed switch you will not be able to configure any of these switching technologies that we are going to cover in this series right so that's just it um, when it comes to land switching introduction to land switching technologies uh, so in our next um, video we are going to look at uh, what are the software equivalents of uh, these switches right what softwares can we have installed on our system and simulate you know how to configure these switches these routers without having to spend money to get them physically right and then once we have introduced ourselves to those software then we'll go ahead to switching technologies and then we'll be starting with virtual local area network which is also known as vlan thanks for watching and see you in the next presentation